Dominique Campbell last seen behind an Oakland shoe store August 10th, 2009, when the boy's foster father, Rich Ross, says he parked his vehicle behind the store, leaving Hassani behind. I know I'm innocent, and I know Lewis is innocent. Ross talked about being arrested and interrogated by police. He says investigators tried to deceive him shortly after they arrested his fiance at the Union City Park Station without Ross's knowledge. Ross reportedly told authorities he left Hassani at the back door of the store. He says he ran inside to tell Hassani's foster mother and aunt that he arrived to drop off the boy, along with the boy's one-year-old sister. Ross, later arrested and jailed on suspicion of murder, was released after no charges were filed. Jennifer was texting me back and forth for text messages that didn't make sense, but I found out she wasn't texting. They had her in custody. They had her tel cell phone texting me. What were they texting you? Basically, coercing me to come out, come get her. Police say Ross, who failed an FBI polygraph, remains the primary suspect in Hassani's disappearance. I told them the same story I gave the previous set of detectives. I told the same story I gave the other. They got the same story, but they were not happy with the story that they got. They wanted something else. Yeah, you know what? You told me the same story too, Ross, and I wasn't happy with it because it doesn't make sense. And I know where you are. You moved across country, but you didn't get away. Right now, cops cannot make an arrest. They had arrested the foster father, but let him go after three days. They needed more evidence. During our show tonight, a tipster calls in with information we didn't have about the foster father having latex gloves in the back of his car, domestic violence allegedly in the home, how the aunt didn't take up for the little boy and let him be abused, a little boy with cerebral palsy. Out to our lines, Feta in Missouri. Hi, Feta. Hello. Thank you for um, accepting my call, and I am deeply disturbed by the information that I have been hearing. A friend of mine told me about your show, and I want to just thank you for allowing Hassani to even be on here. He resembles my son, Christian Taylor Ferguson, Mr. from St. Louis, Missouri. He's been missing since June 11, 2003, and I am so disturbed. But my, my feeling about this case is this. Well, this is my question. Could this be a copycat situation based on my son's disappearance here in St. Louis, Missouri? The father has not been charged. He's walking around as if nothing has occurred. They um, took him down for questioning, questioning. He cut short questioning, lawyered up, and has not responded to law enforcement or any kind of authorities here in St. Louis. Even though my situation is all over the internet and and Christopher and, Taylor Christian, Ferguson. Christian C H R I S I A N. And if you went to um looking for an angel dot org, which is my website, I started an organization too and I'd like to thank um the foundation Polyclos they helped me in the past. And uh, actually, the Sean Hornbeck Foundation started off here in St. Louis. They came to my rescue immediately. And after the experience with them, I started my own organization called... Tell me the name. Tell me so I can look it up online. Um, his, my son's name is Christian Taylor Ferguson. You, no, I've got that. Your organization, your website. Lookingforanangel.org. Lookingforanangel.org. Yes, ma'am. You know what? Here's the thing. Feta, and I'm, I'm going to look it up as soon as I get off the air, because I know when I get home, I pray the twins are going to be asleep. Yeah. Unless the cops get enough information at the get-go. Okay. Now, now. If they don't have enough, they can't make an arrest. They can't make him, now that he's a target, they can't make him come in and talk to them. Well, let me tell you about my case. They have enough evidence. There's a 33-page police report. They know that this father faced this disappearance, and they're doing nothing about it. So my, you know what, Feta? I'm going to look at it as soon as we get off the air, and so is my whole staff. Well, I because you know what? If we could get it on the air, yes. how do I know another tip, like the one that's just come in about Hassani Campbell, exactly. won't come in about Christian? We don't know. That's right. So we'll be on it. And hey, to you, Mark Class, did you hear that? What about all these people I did hear you that. have helped over all the years? You know, there is a common thread here. It extends to Christian, it extends to Hassani, it extends to Zara Baker. 
Did you know that the maltreatment of children with disabilities is 1.5 to 10 times higher than the maltreatment of children without disabilities and that immediate family members perpetrate the majority of oh. neglect, physical abuse and emotional abuse against these children? Mark, I did know. I did know. Out to Tom Shamshack, former police chief, private investigator, instructor at Big U Boston University. What do we do now? The cops have tried everything. Now, a suspect that they did have has moved across the country. Now what can they do? Nancy, good evening. Uh, the police can continue to uh, investigate. Uh, hopefully there will be an investigative uh, grand jury at some point. Uh, I would make sure that the uh, they continue to uh, try to figure out what occurred in terms of, you know, wh what happened with that child? Did this fellow purchase a container? I mean, he had his hands uh, covered up. I mean, that could have been on a trash bag, but obviously he disposed of something. Uh, again, did they ch check uh, dumpsters and, uh, and, and the likes of that? Now, the National Center for Missing Exploited Children has a volunteer group of investigators who can continue to work on this case and assist the Oakland Police Department with this case. But what you're doing tonight is, in, it's only the second night of the series, and you're shining a bright spotlight on a social problem that this country needs to address.